sensitivity training. They haven't understood the various uh, needs and special needs have occurred uh, and, and been very limited in terms of diversity even amongst police forces. It's only in the last 15 years, I would say, that even our police force is, uh, is as diverse as it is now. So there is that opportunity to make sure that they do understand. And you know, every area and every region is not the same. So I'm not suggesting that what we do here in Victoria will be what which should happen you know, in, in Oak Bay, but certainly what we need to do here in Victoria is cater it to our population base here. Thoughts from Dean? Uh, just that we have, um, I mean, fundamentally it begins with training. I mean, one's, I mean, it's not sensitivity training. It's about how do you deal with people suffering from mental health and addiction? How do you recognize the signs of those issues? And we've seen that head trauma is one of the big issues that are, is arising through the homeless report. So it's about providing that training, which is happening. It's going to take a while to work through all 243 police officers. The second thing is, is, is we instituting, under this new police chief, the diversity committee that we used to have. And I will say this, one of the great things I had before when I was just a community activist at Burnside Gorge, I got to serve on the police board uh, with Janet Rabinovich, and she worked with peers. And uh, you can make changes by setting that stuff up. And we just don't ever arrest a sex trade worker anymore, because we don't want to re-victimize the victim. We know there's ways we can move forward. It's always a gentle balance between interfering with the police officers and the law, you know, that you can't tell your police uh, chief how to enforce the law but we can certainly set those policies in place and move forward to make sure. And like everyone else here, I mean, the wonderful question I had when I, was, I finally got to hire this one is I said, what color are your police cars? And he said blue and white. And I'll explain that later because that was the one that sold me on it. And I, Stephen, I, any I thoughts? Have, Rebecca, I, I, have to, I have to go downstairs. I would like to stay and have, have listened to all this, but I have to go play my match. I'm home last John, is there any way that you can alleviate that right now? Can I say this? I hope, and it's always been my commitment, that this isn't a one-time thing. Your expectation needs to know that you can come and talk to us anytime when we're mayor, or that we're going to come back here again and again and again. This is just not a one-time occasion. You come and talk to us anytime. And John's coming around to see you, Rebecca. Yeah, John, um, John's coming around to deal with it. I mean, we're we're going we're to get one more question in before going to close. Can I just respond to the, the question I haven't had a chance? Yes, I, I will say yes, that I've thank you, Steve. spent some time with Frank Elsner on uh, several occasions, and I have to say he's the chief of police. That uh, he is a he is a progress he is a progressive uh, man who has really keen ideas, and his absolute belief is that mental health and addiction issues and homelessness issues shouldn't be policed. It needs to be dealt in some other way. So somebody who's coming with that vision, I think, is extremely uh, optimistic about our community, and I've got to give him credit. I believe he's going to move in that direction, and I totally support his vision. We have time for one final round. Uh, so, uh, and, and I know we could be here all night. Uh, and still not run out of questions, so I'll let the panel choose wisely <laughs> on the final question here. No, no pressure. Okay. Over um, the last few months, the City of Vancouver has taken bold steps to address street homelessness. If elected mayor, what bold actions would you take to address street homelessness in our city? Just before I let the candidates jump in, uh, Don just let just, Don just let me know that everyone's mats are fine. You don't necessarily need to leave right now if if that's uh, if that's working well. Bold steps. I guess I'll start first. I guess is it Rebecca that stood up? So thanks for raising that. Uh, that you needed to um, participate in democracy tonight, and thanks to Dawn. This is what I love. Some, a need is expressed, and a need is met. So there is no silver bullet, bullet for homelessness. We all know that. The bold step that I will take is to continue working on all of the different ways to address the problem. 
we cannot just go with one. And again, if you want to go look at my website, I've uh, listed six different ways. So boldly, I will not just focus on one or two. We need a comprehensive solution. And in my closing remarks, I'm going to say a little bit more for me about how to develop those solutions. It is a priority for everyone in this city. Everybody I talk to, affordability is the number one issue for businesses, for seniors, for people who are homeless, for people who are on the brink of becoming homeless. It's the number one issue. So whichever of us is elected, we've all got to take action on that. Stephen, Ida, or Dean on that uh, question posed by Mary. So uh, there is a silver bullet uh, to deal with homelessness, and that is housing. I mean, with the report that came out recently said that. So that's the question is, how do we get there? to do that, and I do believe that the region needs to come online. The bold step that I would take if I was mayor, everybody on this panel has some really great ideas. My bold step is to call them in and let's have a council and actually try to initiate each one of the really good ideas that the mayors, mayoral candidates tonight have put forward. I think if we speak with a louder voice and with an informed voice that we are gonna achieve some successes. Yeah. Dean or Ida? Well, the, the, as I say, it, this is a, a complex problem. I would agree that there is not a, a one answer, one solution to all this. Obviously, affordable housing is important, but we're not going to get it all built as quickly as the need uh, demands. But at the same time, you don't want to just build a unit without the support services. There are people who need to have the support services and that's where the provincial government does come in and if you make a case for those support services that complement that housing that's being provided for and encourage people to build that affordable housing and make it easier for them to build the housing not harder as I've heard from some developers then we can at least start to move that goalpost it's not going to happen overnight but if you at least set those targets you'll get there and Dean finally any thoughts on that point well, there's a couple of bold steps. One of them I can't talk about, but man, if we can make it happen, it'll be great. Um, because, you know, you can't really talk about other people's property publicly. <laughs> Having said that, there are also two other things that have happened really quickly. I'll say this. When Oak Bay decided that they would not allow seniors housing, my God, Oak Bay uh, Village twice, they turned them down, that the city of Victoria said, you know what? Supportive housing for seniors is important. We put it in and we're moving it forward in the hillside area. Here's the opportunity. The old Oak Bay Lodge is zoned institutional. You have the zoning to put it in into supportive housing right now for the homeless. So when those move out, let's go get that, nail it down, it's already owned by the province. We can make that happen. The second one, boldly, that we can move forward on is the current seniors who get a care facility on Baptist Housing just on Johnson Street will be moved into that housing. We need just low cost housing for seniors. Who are 65 don't need supportive care just 300 bucks a month for housing they're all taking care of themselves there's another big bold one another hundred units that we can move forward on so we can make some substantive changes just on those two projects tomorrow and we can make them happen in the next year and a half and if i can pull that other one off it's going to be kind of exciting yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for for keeping everything fairly tight and focused and uh, uh, moving forward tonight we're going to give each candidate two minutes now and we'll time this out for closing statements. Um, the panel suggested at the beginning of this conversation that they were interested in new ideas. I was wondering if they wanted to hear one now. The idea being, why are we taking homeless, addicted people who are they're addicted to poverty, they're addicted to drugs, or they're addicted to whatever their issue is, and we're going to house them, we're going to put them in separate boxes? Does that, does that treat anything, or does that hide the problem? Why aren't we taking the building that's right across the street that's been empty for three years and unlocking the door and then allowing people the space to relax, to calm down, to be, feel safe, to feel community. You talk about the community. Where is your community? That's a, 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 that's a reasonable point, and I think it's, uh, it, it, it's nice that you made it here. <laughs> and all four candidates are listening. Uh, and, they'll, uh, and they'll take that point with them. I want to give two minutes to each of the candidates for closing statements now. 
Um, let's go in the same order that we began in, so that the person that had the first voice at the outset doesn't also have the last voice yeah. here. Does that make sense? I'm just trying to remember what order we went in. <laughs> I was three. So hang on, you're saying that we go in reverse order, right? No, no. 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 So, I go first. Dean, so, Ida. so Dean Fortin goes first, and then Ida Chong, Lisa helps, and then Stephen Andrew gets the last word this time. I'm going to use my two minutes just to quickly tell a story, because I think it's an important story, because everyone here is committed, and part of it is to give you information, so when you leave here, frankly, it's almost like a revival meeting. Get out there and proselytize and, and, and sell the truth, which is we need more housing and affordable housing. We started with the hardest to house, the hardest 50 hardest to house, with our RICOT teams and our ACT teams, and we housed those 50 people. And those 50 people were responsible in five years for 6,000 police calls. 1,000 police calls in the last year alone. And we housed those people with supports. And the police calls dropped to 250, a 75% reduction in calls for police. But even more importantly, and we weren't planning this, but it happened, 75% reduction.